Well, well, well. Good evening and welcome to this wrestling podcast between me, Jack Donnelly, a.k.a. Pete the Metalhead, and of course, my lovely co-host. Me, Raven. Welcome. Yeah, and well, <coughs> I'm quite new to podcasts, so this is a uh, first for me. We're going to be going about the subject that we both love, wrestling and whatnot, like I said. And um, we're going over the past uh, week of events, particularly uh, WrestleMania, the Raw After Mania, and start off with the most recent Smackdown. Do you uh, want to take it away with that one, Rave? Yeah, yeah, I can do. Many people don't give a fuck about SmackDown, you know, but I do. I'm we the people, you know. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to be covering, uh, yeah, like I said, WrestleMania 30 Raw, which was from the 7th, and SmackDown from the 11th. We're going to get that out of the way first, uh, because obviously, you know, SmackDown's just uninteresting to talk about, but we'll talk about it. So, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So SmackDown obviously kicks off with Big Show and Cesaro, which is obviously sort of a match set up because obviously Cesaro eliminated Big Show from the Battle Royal at WrestleMania. It wasn't a bad match. It was an okay I'd one. I'd agree with you on that. I mean, it did, set, it did do some uh, follow-up storytelling, you know, with the whole the break of the real Americans, you know, with Swagger getting involved and whatnot. Yeah, because obviously what happened on Raw, which I'm going to go into in a minute, obviously, we had Paul Heyman on commentary, obviously, uh, which again, he was just breaking down Michael Cole, which is awesome <laughs> to see. Um, blah, 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 let me just read this. Uh, big swing over here. Uh, yeah, so the match obviously ends, obviously, with a DQ. Uh, Swagger comes out, basically. Big Show went for the, uh, Swagger went for the swing. Swagger comes out, hitting ankle lock on Cesaro. And then basically, that it. That's it. They walk away from that, which is a shame, really. Cesaro does the, what is it, the equaliser. I'm still, I'm still learning all his moves, you see, so he's... Pulls up the equaliser. I was really hoping he'd go back in and do with the big swing, yeah. really, but... Yeah. Neutraliser. Cough. Neutraliser. <laughs> yeah, it's neutraliser, not equaliser, but yeah. My, my, my apologies, like I said. All, <laughs> all, all I know is Cesaro, a big swing, and he likes uppercuts. That's true. It's going to be hard, to, I've just realised, it's going to be hard to talk about this since what happened on Raw before, and SmackDown's just basically Raw recaps. I've just actually noticed that, but fuck it, we'll go on anyway. So, the next thing we see is uh, John Cena comes out, cuts a promo about WrestleMania, blah, 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 but about beating Joe Bray Wyatt, basically about Raw. Wyatt's come out again, they cut a promo saying uh, that he was lucky at WrestleMania and that they will get him back in time. There was probably more dialogue, but I can't really remember it. So, do you remember that? Oh yeah, it was actually one of the better moments of SmackDown, just because every time Bray Wyatt does a promo, I basically just my, just my pants, you know, just... Yeah. It's just, I mean, everything he says is just gold. I mean, even though some of it can be nonsensical gibberish, depending how, you know, how you view the character. Well, yeah, it's, it who's, uh, he does his cult leader, done anything, you know, and, like, spends his, like, you've got to look at it, but you don't look at it like that, like, you look at it in a sort of... So, yeah, he does, does amazing promos, apparently he does them himself, apparently he writes his own stuff, and... Everything. It makes sense, because it'd, it'd be weird to find, like, the creative, WWE creative team have actually started getting good writers in all of a sudden <laughs> after the last couple of years. Why for that, man? The way WWE's been for a while, the creative staff have definitely, like, kicked up. There was a bit of an echo there, I think, but still. Ah, fair but, enough. I have only been watching, again, since August of last year, so, I mean, this is probably a fair bit of stuff I've missed out on. Maybe. With, with wrestling, it kind of varies. Anyway, let's move on. So, we moved on from that. We see second match with Los Matadors versus Ryback, or Ryback, so. Now, oh, this yeah, actually Ryback. wasn't a bad match. And it was weird because Ryback actually got the win in this one, which is obviously been losing for bloody months now. And uh, again, a typical match, uh, five fly moves by the Matadors. Uh, Ryback again gets in, Kurt, some good stuff with Curtis Axel. And Curtis Axel finishes one of them off with the, um, the, I don't know, the face cutter thing, you know, when he slams his face in the floor, the next turn, I don't know what his finish is called, but yeah, finishes him off with that. So yeah, it was shocking to actually see them win. So yeah. Tell you what, move on. There was a promo said that Hulk Hogan will be on SmackDown tonight. You all know cares well especially not me really anyway in fact that's the only reason i watched smackdown because uh, it was uh, well i saw a picture of hulk hogan and daniel bryan in the ring hulking yeah. up and shit so that's literally the only reason yeah, i was watching it this week I, I will admit that was a good moment so we move oh. on to rvd uh he obviously returned on raw versus mr sandow i'm fucking pissed about this because sandow basically now 2014 on april has basically become a jobber now he's basically job pretty much for nearly a month straight now so it's kind of annoying so we had a job match between these two RVD does the typical shit he does the, the you know the leg yeah. drop of the barrier the spin round stuff and then really yeah, very much. Uh, he just did normal shit. Sandel fighting back. It was a solid, okay match, but obviously RVD gets the win, and my office chair just locked, and that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so we get a Stream Rules promo airs. It was, from what I remember, it was probably the most awful promo there ever has been for a history of pay-per-views. I'm pretty sure it starred Daniel Bryan. It was only like a, I think a 10-second long promo for it, and then it uh, obviously... Oh. 
No, I wouldn't say it's that bad. It was nowhere near as bad as uh, the one for the um, you know the Hell in a Cell last year. You know, with oh. uh, with oh, K Quick. Oh, sorry, R Truth. As that, that was know. not bad actually. Him talking like demonic about. It. I thought that was quite offensive. Oh yeah, yeah I know. I just thought like you know he's he's doing a big promos for it, and he wasn't even on the bloody pay per view, was he? Right, yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, R Truth's getting a chance. Wait, no, he's not. Never mind. So yeah, so that is you know, uh, at least Steve uh, Ryan's going to be in Extreme Rules. Hopefully, if he's still on his bloody honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, no, I but he'll be there. So anyway. I was, I'd been drinking that day anyway, so I didn't really remember much of the promo, but still. So, yes, yeah, so that airs, um, which obviously indicates everyone in the UK knows that uh, Stream Wars will be Sky Box Office, which is not really okay to me. I prefer when the Sky Sports, but anyway, yep. So next, we see Hulk Hogan comes out, cuts a promo. He talks about, obviously, the mess-up that he did at WrestleMania. You know, of course, it's the, the Silver Dome, not the Super Dome or whatever. Yeah. So comes out saying he's going to have to be back. Uh, one of the wrestlers that he's idol since then, obviously, Deep Brian, and he's happy for him. Deep Brian comes out. Uh, everyone basically just goes crazy, like, from war. Yes, he's everywhere. Danny Bryan just says more dialogue, and then basically the end with, yeah, they're basically doing Hogan's taunting and stuff, which is actually not bad, yeah. so... You got anything to say on that? Because I don't really like give a too fuss about Hogan. To be well, honest. well, no, I mean, well, so like, I don't give a toss about it now. But you know, when he did his original return in two thousand two, I marked out so bloody hard. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I actually, because I mean, he, he came back, did the WrestleMania eighteen match, and that was awesome. And then he actually won the title the month after, which was the biggest fucking shock to me ever. I mean, if this was back then, and Daniel Bryan was doing that shit with him then, I'd be like, you know, just squirting hot. You know, wrestling love all, all over the place, but you know, now <laughs> that, it's just like it's like a nice little moment. But it, uh, it's man. just Hogan now. You know, just, I mean, he's been in TNA for the last few years, and now he's just trying to come back to get a residual check, basically. Pretty much botched already. You know, he come, he's just the worst <laughs> person to give promos at all. You know, whoever writes his stuff, he needs to memorize it more. Or do what the Rock did. Get it on him and down on your wrist. You know, to remember it. You yeah. know, it's like it's just like what would take something, brother. We're gonna have it WrestleMania, brother. I'm going to brother, brother, and then that's just basically it. And he, he's only given, like, a minimum of 15 words, and he still fucks it up, you know? Probably going to get hate for this, you know, slagging off Hulk Hogan. But, you know, if you people watching this can tell me a legit reason why it's good that Hulk Hogan's back, then please find me one, you know? Like, my butt hurt detector might not go off, you know? So, anyway. Uh, I can give you a legitimate reason now. Nostalgia dollars. <laughs> yeah. Or in that case, pounds. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So there you go. No, no, no reasons. We've got one. You know? So yeah, anyway, moving straight on, we actually see uh, Kobe Kingston versus Bad News Barrett again. We saw him actually have a match on SmackDown uh, Raw. This match was actually quite good. Barrett gets on the mic before he goes to his face. I've got some bad news for you, but Kofi obviously cuts him off. Uh, the match was short, but it wasn't actually too bad. Um, a lot of good back and forth, you know, solid sort of stuff. Um, but pretty much, Kofi went for the Lost in Paradise, spun him man, boom, took the elbow straight to the face, so Barrett obviously gets the win. But still, it, it's, I think if they was to have a longer match, I think it could have been better. I don't know, maybe you remember seeing that one? Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad, I guess, but I mean, it's, I think they're just trying to ease Barrett back in because he's been yeah, off for so bloody long. Kind of, yeah, exactly, just trying to do what any person's kind of drop him back in, you know, or kind of just slowly, yeah, that's good, I mean, I'm glad he's doing matches now, I'm sure the crowd is very happy about this. Okay, so we move on to Santino versus Fandango for the seven millionth time, and this time we see Fandango comes up with Layla and not Summer Rae. They had a breakup on Twitter, apparently, this week or more. I don't know what happened here. And maybe it's part of the network or the backstage news. I miss why Fandango got rid of Summer Rae. Are they pushing Summer Rae forward? Why is Layla with Fandango? I don't know. Do you know why? I have no I idea. But, nah, but, it, but to me, it, it, it feels kefe. It doesn't feel like, uh, you know, there's like the genuine fucking... Uh Oh no, there was yeah. no, obviously there's no general breakup. I'm just wondering why WWE oh, dancer, like. God only knows. Well, maybe they just wanted to mix it up a bit because, or maybe, maybe Fandango is, probably has a bit of pull and he's just kind of got fed up with somewhere and, you know, yeah. decided to get know. somebody else. Yeah, I mean, I don't some, know. Yeah. it might have something to do with Total Divas. I don't know because I watched a minute, oh, I watched about two minutes of that show. And right. I had to turn it off before I vomited blood. Three minutes, mate. I didn't even get through a minute yet. The wife forced me to watch that. She says, no, this is good programming. I'm like, bitch, leave. Trust me, get out of the room. No, it's not good programming, you know? <laughs> like, it really isn't. Sorry for all your Total Diva fans out there. But true, actually, some of did actually is now on Total Divas, and they started filming season two, so that might be a good reason why they've changed her, to give her more time for Total Diva. You are right. She probably just sussed the thing out there. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> 
So, uh, so yeah, we see Santango Fandango for the uh, Santina versus Fandango for the 100th time. Um, yeah, basically it's a short job and match which no one cares about. Santino again does a hip toss, goes to the Cobra straight away. Lolea distracted him or something, and then Fandango gets the roll up for the win. So yeah, there we go. Uh, promo showed about Paige winning the Thieves title on Raw. We're going to talk about that later. Adam Rose uh, promo shows. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Adam Rose. Do you know who Adam Rose is? Do you know who he was in NXT? Um, well, all I know is it was an NXT. Um, I've not watched much NXT. I've seen like, a couple of bits here and there. I mean, I, I'm still just trying to get back into the main product, which I'm, I'd say I'm fairly back into now. So, yeah. I mean, I, and I've got the network as well, so I really should check, check out NXT. You know, but mm. it's um, well, yeah, this Adam Rose guy. I don't know. I think he might be a good comedy face, but uh, I'm not sure. If I'm going to be honest, uh, a guy I think was called uh, Leo Kruger, Leo Kruger in NXT. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't too bad. He's had some other gimmicks, but they moved him forward. He's not a bad wrestler, from what I can remember. If I remember Leo Kruger, was he's not a bad wrestler. His voice irritates the shit out of me, though, sometimes when he talks. You know, this is my girlfriend, this is my ex-girlfriend, and I'm thinking, I just want to punch him in the face. Seriously? <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sure... Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it'll be okay. I can't see him going far in WWE. He'll probably come out, have some big, like, fancy, like, I don't know, lights. I mean, look at Kazani when he came in. He was supposed to be some good thing, but then he ended up having one match and then got let go. I can feel the same with Bad and Rose, but it's good to finally see they're taking NXT. They've taken three NXT people within this week alone and pushed them forward onto the main roster. And we'll get into Bo Dallas as well in a little bit. So, anyway, so, got any more to say there, sorry, before I go on? Uh, no, 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 like you said, well, um... We'll go into the Bo Dallas conversation later. I have no idea who this guy is. All I know is all the bloody internet memes. I believe and all this. Uh, yeah, and all the believers. I, mean, I know. I know he's. I know he was the headliner. One of the headliners of the first NXT pay per view, you know, arrival or something yeah. like that. It was a lot of memes. I've actually seen that, yeah. So have you seen right, I, I've seen the Cesaro uh, Sammy Rain match, yeah, which is fucking awesome. Best but, uh, matches, yeah, they need to put Sammy Sane forward. Anyway, yeah, uh, Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt are actually brothers in real life. They're called Rose <gasps> or something. Yeah, I know it's shock, you know, but yeah, they're apparently brothers in real life. So yeah, it will get into Bo Dallas, and a lot, a lot of people do actually don't like the fucker. So, so anyway, to end SmackDown, we have the main event, which is Usos and Dean Daniel Bryan versus Kane, Orton, and Batista. Probably the most um, bit where you want to take off your pants and throw it around the room ever since. Main with Danny Bryan won the title, it'll probably be this main event. It wasn't a bad match, yeah. it was a typical six man tag with like back and forth stuff from the Usos, back and forth stuff with Orton and Kane and stuff like that. Uh, it ended obviously, I think, with the Usos being basically fucked out of it, the situation by Orton and uh, Orton and uh, Batista. They still come down basically to rescue Daniel Bryan, they all stand tall in the ring, and that's SmackDown. Right, let's let's move on to the next one. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was SmackDown overall. Probably giving about a 5 out of 10 probably for that, because, you know, SmackDown sometimes has its moments, it sometimes doesn't. So, um, do you want to do WrestleMania now, or do you want to do Raw? Um, we'll, yeah, we'll do, well, from now on, we'll, we'll go uh, sequentially, so we'll definitely do uh, WrestleMania, and then we'll go on to the Raw after Mania, because I think those are the two big ones we got to yeah, handle true. in this podcast, as it were. That's what she said. Um, right. Oh my god. Right, okay. Literally, the SmackDown week before WrestleMania, I only wrote literally like two paragraphs for that. <laughs> anyway, right, so... Uh, my God, um, right, hang on, just trying to find my, uh, just trying to find my thingy. Shit, I can't find my notes on that. No. Just not to worry, sir, I'll, I'll cover for you while you do it. It was me, all along, Austin. Other wrestling right. references. Right. Okay, so now we're going to start with when you're 30. Right, so... A lot of people saying it was a fantastic WrestleMania, a lot of people saying it was okay WrestleMania. I thought it was fucking good. There was one disappointment, but I thought it was really good. What do you think? Me first yeah. night? Um, well, let's see. Uh, when I started watching again last year, I did, I've not liked many of the pay-per-views just because I've still been trying to get used to the whole new product because, you know, I grew up with the Attitude Era and I'm like, yeah, I want the adult stuff and now it's all PG. Yeah. Fuck this, but, the chairs and the fossil flicking the birds, you know. It's, like. it's took me time but I finally got into the product properly and, yeah, this WrestleMania, I fucking loved it as much as, like, WrestleMania 17 when I watched that as a kid. You know, it was just... Maybe because I was I was drinking, so I mean maybe I reduced my mental state to a child again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe the fucking yeah. who's just yeah seeks out and go, my God, this is fucking good. Yeah, but yeah, it, um, it was good. It was uh, I'm gonna say it's probably one of the good mess mains for a while. And the, what I mean oh, by definitely. that pretty much was you near know, every match on the card was good other than I was a little bit disappointed with the Undertaker match it wasn't really that good it looked like basically Taker was crippled for most of it and the John Cena match and Bray Wyatt was a good one 
I would give it easy a 6 out of 10, but at the end of the night, I honestly expected Bray to go over, but he didn't. So, anyway, so, we start out with WrestleMania. We had the pre-show, which was the tag team match. I actually didn't watch. I actually forgot. I had had a drink, and I actually forgot about that as well. So um, I, think I, had, uh, I had checked it out on the network, because we're still we're still having some streaming problems. But luckily, when the event started, we were fine. But um, the match, it was an okay tag, four, four corner tag match. You know, it's uh, nothing spectacular. Usos obviously do some high-flying manoeuvres, you know, like everyone sets up, they jump out and whatnot. And yep. then, well, yeah, well, basically, I can't remember, I don't think it was an elimination match, I think it was just uh, one pinfall, so, yeah, the Usos win it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that was a bad eight, unfortunately. So, I mean, we still had to wait about another 20 minutes of Josh Matthews and the other people yeah. just saying random nonsense. Yeah. yeah. So, did we have anyone, usually when they start WrestleMania, they have someone come out and sing America the Beautiful. I don't think that happened this year. I'm not no, it didn't, sure. did it? I don't, I, I'm pretty sure it didn't. Yeah, that's well, quite strange. Pissed, but, you know, so, so we start out with Daniel Bryan and Triple H, which was actually kind of annoyed me at first, but... Really? Well, yeah, because, I mean, I mean, this match was actually one of my, in my opinion, was one of my most look-forward-to matches, and it was probably going to be one of the best matches on the card, so it's, the fact that they opened with this match, when they could have opened with the Battle Royal, was a little bit... Oh, awkward. right, I, I see what you mean. I thought you meant, like, you were pissed off for the match itself. Oh, right. No, 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 I was, I was happy with the match. I loved yeah, the match right, itself. Yeah, yeah. Good. No, I was happy that it was. I wasn't a little bit unhappy that it was the starter. So, so we get in the match. So we see obviously the winner goes to the main event. So Triple H comes out in this what looks to be uh, Shao Khan kind of attire that he's got on this golden oh, thing yeah. with these women and a massive chair. Never disappoints for some reason. Comes out with that. Uh, I think he had music playing before the game's music hit play. So Daniel Bryan again comes out. So the match itself was fucking fantastic, and I loved this match. It was oh, it was non-stop. Solid work from both of them. You know, I was sitting there with the wife saying, right, to make this match over, we need a finisher kick out. What does he do? You know, we had, like, the running knee, he kicks out. Brian kicks out the pedigree and that, and you just think, right, you're on edge. You know, I'm up. I'm basically jizzing in front of the TV right now, you know, because I'm just like, wow. We've we we just we've just had what could be the best match of the night, and it was absolutely fantastic. To be honest, I didn't see Daniel Bryan even winning it. I didn't see Baron Dryman even winning the title, to be honest. So the fact that he didn't really? Did you see that one coming? I, I mean, as, as unlikely <laughs> yeah. as it would have been in kayfabe, but it was obviously what was going to happen. I mean, it was predictable, but... I suppose it did, to a degree, have a bit of predictability in it. I mean, it was kind of everyone probably thought Daniel Bryan was going to go through there. Regardless, the match was awesome. Oh, a 9 yeah. out of 10 star match, so... You, you would agree? It was a good oh, one? Yeah. I thought it was a good one. Oh, definitely. I mean, it was just... Um, it was a shaky start to the event, mainly because of, as we mentioned earlier, Hulk Hogan, but... Uh, that entrance. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention. Yeah, it opens with Hulk Hogan, Austin, The Rock. Yeah, and he yeah, bought something. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna round the belt back to after the Triple H Daniel Bryan discussion because. Yeah, kind of. It, sorry, it, sorry, it, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's <laughs> dilemma. Hey, it's only our first podcast. We're bound to be mistakes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, um, so, so but there yeah. we go. As we were saying about Triple H's entrance, I mean, my God, that was just like. Well, you know the old internet jokes are like Triple H trying to bury every all, all the other wrestlers. That entrance pretty yeah. much she, she buried every wrestler who's ever wrestled at WrestleMania ever. Yeah, exactly. Was, you know, with, with these, like, yeah, next entrance. Yeah, the insane choir oh. music. The you know the Emperor fucking throw on and just like you know the perfect music coming off when he you know he takes his crown off it, and then Ew. he starts his normal entrance. It's like oh fucking hell. <laughs> I need a minute to recover from that. It was, one, you know? Exactly, yeah, it was brilliant. It's always gonna, it's always gonna be brilliant, isn't it? So it's gonna be awesome. So right, uh, so moving on, we forgot about. So yeah, let's just go back. Yeah, so we opened with Hulk Hogan, who actually fucked up his lines and said it was a silver dome, not the super dome, or something like that. Anyway, uh, we see the Rock, we see Austin, we knew they were going to be there anyway. If you live on Spoiler Avenue and Dirt Sheet Rose, you would have seen that they were there was photos of them backstage anyway, so we knew they were going to come out. Uh, they just basically talk between each other, and that was basically it, I think, wasn't it? I don't think there's nothing special in that. Well, 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 no, 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 but I mean, like you say, I mean, uh, being the old school attitude era kid I am, it was just pure fucking wank material for me. Yeah, I was, was like, oh my god, yeah, was... Stone Cold, The Rock, and Hogan. Uh, yeah, it was okay for me because obviously we seen The Rock came back and beat CM Punk, so it was good to see Austin again. It was actually it was good to see Austin. So moving on, second match we had was obviously was the jobber match. We had the, the Shield versus Kane uh, out and the Outlaws. Uh, obviously it was a two minute to three minute match. It was basically the Shield going over, hitting punches and just non stop action. It was actually for a jobber match. It was actually fun to watch. I was oh, already. Yeah. 
I was already shaking from adrenaline anyway, you know, fucking, uh, Michelle was like, do you want me to get you water or something, you know, like, or something like because I was shaking due to how good the first match was. Okay. So, kind of, it was a bit annoying, I kind of did want to see it, but usually if they shorten matches down on this, it usually means that the other matches are getting more longer match time periods, so, it's all about you, what did you think of the, um, Shield one? Yeah, I mean, I was expecting, um, I mean, fair enough, it was kind of put together on the fly a couple of weeks beforehand, but I mean, I thought the match would have at least been like five to ten minutes at least. But, if, yeah. yeah, but um, as I uh, mentioned in my uh, Pete the Metalhead uh, WrestleMania 30 review, you can watch now on YouTube. <laughs> Shame, sh- nothing like a shameless plug. But no, yeah, as I mentioned on there, it's a short but sweet match, you know. It, it, I think it works and whatnot. I mean, especially the yeah, way I think it. I think it was good to be short. I, I didn't like that. Basically, it was them basically jobbing. I know they could have had some sort of like mini fight back. I think they did, but it wasn't. You know, it was just basically all the shields. So you know, what I mean, maybe at a later time mm. they could have a better one. I don't know. So well, just before we move on, um, I don't yeah. know this uh, storyline or not, but uh, on the same night, about an hour later, there's an article on WWE.com dot uh, com saying that after you know that triple power bomb the shield had given him, apparently he was coughing up blood and he had to take him to hospital. No, Billy Gunn. Who, sorry? Oh, Billy Gunn, really? Yeah, appa- oh, apparently. That's, I mean, because the thing is, the article was on WWE.com, so I didn't know how genuine it was. You can never but, yeah, tell really, whether it's genuine. I mean, there's been no mention ah. of it, so I don't know if it's just a cover, so, like, you know, Might Rose, 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 that thing. Yeah, Rose, so Road Dog and Billy can just, like, retire, like, quietly or something, or if it was just genuinely, like, yeah, you, you know, well, they haven't been on Raw since then, or SmackDown since then. So, well, that was some good information. I did not know that. So, yeah. So, yeah, give yeah. this podcast a like if you know if you learned something new there, say because I know I did. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, we move on to the the Battle Royal, um, yeah. which was what I thought was going to be a fucking terrible match. It was actually not a bad match. It was yeah. actually pretty good. Thirty one. Hogan said thirty, and he mentions that on Raw. It was actually thirty. 30- 31. I don't know who the extra person they added in. So, um, just to name some people, obviously, they had a battle royal, obviously, just to put all the card. We had Yoshi, Brad Manis, Kay, Carlees, Ryder, McIntyre, Free and B, Henry, Titus, Miz, Xavier Woods, Sandow. We even had David Otunga, which was even in there, so that was actually good to see him back again. Dero, Seamus, Big Show. So, to first start this prediction out, I obviously thought Big Show was going to win, you know, because obviously... Well, yeah, it's pretty much it's my fault as well, I mean... Yeah, this is for, yeah, it's for a giant trophy, it's obviously going to belong to a giant, it's obviously it's going to be too obvious, you know, yeah. you know. So he's, he's, even, he's, even one of the, he's even more of the bloody Andre the Giants, like, um, you know, ring attire, you know, from the 80s and whatnot. Yeah, 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 true actually, yeah, he was. So, and then, so he gets down to like Big Show, Cesaro, and Sheamus, and that, and then, so at the end it all basically, Cesaro like, pecks him up over his head and slams him out. And everyone goes crazy because obviously, yeah. you know, after the war, and you know, I'm, you know, I'm a Cesaro guy, I've been following him since the Ring of Honor days, it's been, you know, he's, he's a fucking talented wrestler, he needed a single push, and what, I've, what happened on Raw as well was just like, well, yeah, it was even better realistically, gets him over. And stuff like that. So yeah, are you are you a Cesaro person? Do you like him? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. when I first uh, like I started up, um, I, well, I saw the real Americans. I, I didn't like the gimmick at first because I thought, oh, this is it. Because when I first saw the gimmick, it was at, it was them versus uh, Del Rio or something. I thought this yeah. is a bit racist. I thought, well, um, but look, I put those thoughts to rest because I realised it's supposed to be a jokey parody. So all yeah. right, fair yeah. enough. So yeah, yeah, but. but because I didn't think of much of him, so I started watching some of the matches and Cesaro. Yeah, I mean, he, he, I, re- I never realised how fucking insanely amazing he is. Yeah, he especially is. this pure strength he has. I mean, I mean, he, he's, he's, he's not like he's not muscly, but he's not like you know pound for pound like you know insane. Yeah, that's right. Like big, big ear right back. Yeah, but he just. Yeah, he can he can work. He can work a match. He's a great talent. Hopefully, he'll go far. I mean, he should go far now that he's got uh, Paul Heyman back in him. You know, spoiler alert! But you've seen well anyway. That's why you're watching the damn podcast. So fuck you all. <laughs> no, not really. But I mean, um, so yeah, so it was good to see him. It was a surprise to see him win. I didn't think they'd actually let Cesaro win, and I don't see what he would want to do with an Andre the Giant trophy. Uh, that was a bit weird, which I'm sure I think Swagger comes out and destroys on Raw. Uh, I'm pretty sure that happened. So, yeah, so it's a bit win. Hey, was he shocked that he won, or was, what, do you think that was okay for a win, or do you still think Big Show might have been a better for a win? Oh, no, no, definitely. I was kind of surprised at Zara winning, but I was just, I was so genuinely, um, what's the word? I've, I've gotten the word happy. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've long forgotten, I long forgot how to be happy many years ago. But no, that no, was... 
I was genuinely pleased with the the outcome because I was like, I wasn't seeing it because it was just basically, yeah, Big Show's going to win, Big Show's going to win. It's like, oh, Cesaro's yeah, like, I, You can see it got down to the final three. Big Show was still there, you know. I'm there tapping the missus. She's going to win. Cesaro comes out there, picks him up with the fucking amazing strength, tosses him over, or off, whatever one it was. <laughs> and then, boom, Cesaro wins. Everyone's happy as a sandboy, you know. So, it was good. Yeah, so we move on to Cena and Bray Wyatt, which I was going to call Wade Barrett in for a minute. Uh, John Cena and Bray Wyatt, which was what I thought was going to be second best match tonight. So we had, I've read reports before that Wade Barrett's strong writers were going to do a live cover there. They did. Oh, Matt Crowley, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. They were fantastic. They were almost as good as the Court of Personality when they did Punk's song last year or the year before. When they did that, it was... Screw you. <laughs> Screw oh, sorry, it's a, it's a personal thing, um... <laughs> a, a mate of mine has been playing Cult of Personality non-stop since CM Punk left, so... I know, no, I Even know at the top. mention of the song, I must tell anyone to screw themselves. <laughs> okay, well, right, it's not on video, so I'm just going to do that. No, I'm joking. Yeah, but I mean, they did yeah. do it well. Uh, Bray Wyatt's band did do it well as well. They wore freaky masks, it came out. I got to a point where I wasn't sure if they were going to come out or not, but as soon as you saw the guitarist and stuff, you were like, yeah. So again, yeah. I mean, I'm already semi-hard at this point anyway. It just shoots it straight up pretty much, and then it was shot back down after the match. So yeah, so obviously we've had great promo work between Bray Wyatt and John Cena. They've since him attacking him in the, the chamber and everything. The match itself was, I'm going to have to say it was only okay. It wasn't as good as I thought it could have been. Uh, Bray Wyatt was sporting black and uh, new, new basically kind of a new t-shirt, new attire. Oh yeah, yeah, black and white. Um, yeah, which actually looked quite well. It's a shame he's not wearing that anymore. Uh, the match was okay. It was back and forth stuff. Um, I thought it was just going to be typical Cena going over and then Bray Wyatt coming back for the win. That wasn't like that at all. I can't really remember how the match ends. Uh, I know well, what it, it was. Uh, well, I mean, as much as the wrestling aspect, as I say, it was not an all right wrestling match. But the um, the storytelling they were doing, and, you know, cause they were trying to, you know, uh, Bray Wyatt was trying to get uh, C- uh, John, Punk, uh, John Cena to attack him and whatnot with a steel chair. You know, like, come on, unleash the monster, Cena. And it was like, you know, Cena uh, almost goes Basically, yeah, almost basically goes what Kane did, you know, yeah. like, and used to hate and all, all the stuff like that. So, it was... A- yeah, it was the it's first time I've heard... It was the first time since I've started watching I've heard Cena get, like, a you know, any kind of cheer at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. It was, it was good. People back in Bray White swinging their hands, you know. Oh, that was, that was fantastic. Tapping, that. you know, clapping at the... Um, Dun, 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 you know, I do better not try and get done for copyright. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't bad. I, was, I really did want Bray Wyatt to win. I was kind of hoping he would win, but of course it's WrestleMania. Cena, obviously, be a super Cena. Maybe he might lose at Extreme Rules. I don't know, you know. So, uh, so yeah, did he win by a won by an FU, didn't he? Or did he win by submission? Won um, by submission I can't remember. I, no, I think it was uh, Attitude Adjustment or FU, whichever you want yeah. to call it. I, I, Call yeah. it the FU because I think it's much. Better, so. so yeah, so let's move on. We well, move on. So just before we do, uh, so the most interesting thing about the match was um, the hardest thing for me to watch it because I was watching it to, for Bray Wyatt to win, but I yeah. wanted John Cena to win only because me and my friend had put a ten pound bet on it, and if we won, we got like sixty quid off it. And um, ah. so basically, when when Wyatt won, I was just like. I was crying inside, but I thought, "Oh, I've won sixty. Well, not well, split between us. So I've won thirty quid. Yay!" <laughs> Dude, you said when Wyatt won. Oh, win. sorry. Yeah, when we seen a one. I, I just wanted. <laughs> I want Wyatt to. I wanted Wyatt to win. That was <laughs> well, it's so bad. Yeah, yeah I'm going to rewrite bad. history. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I wish you could. If you get the WWE 14 game, you can rewrite history. Yeah, um, yeah, they did have spy bets going on actually. Uh, they were having, which is a bit weird to me because I didn't. I wasn't sure you could actually bet on the script to show. Likewise, I was kind of shocked. Um, yeah. A bit weird. But, yeah, uh, it was, I mean, I was going to put a bet down on, you know, Bray Wyatt and Undertaker winning and stuff, but obviously it didn't, so I'm glad I didn't lose any money. So, yeah, oh, did yeah. you lose any money from that? Uh, no, we, well, just most of the bets, you, you had to put a lot of money on to earn any slight amount of money, apart from John Cena winning, because that, that was the only bet that you could put, like, £10 on and get 60 quid back. So we wow. thought... Oh. We just thought, we're right, we'll put five pound on each, put that together, and um, we got thirty quid each off it, so Yeah. That's you know, safe that's cool. Did you did you spend that already? Um yeah, I uh, use it to get a headset which is still not arrived yet. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. If there's, again, sorry for technical problems and shit, yeah, but still it's good. Yeah. Right, so we move on, just go we move on to the streak versus, you know, the beast. And this match I'm gonna try, too soon, try man. and Too yeah. soon. 
Too soon, man. It's too fucking soon. No, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna try not to. Uh, I'm not angry really anymore about this. Um, I, I've got a few theories. We're gonna go through. So we have Brock Lesnar versus the Undertaker. Of course, again, Undertaker has an amazing coat which you couldn't really see in detail. The lights went on. All these coffins with the previous WrestleManias and names on it and that stuff. So that was a real nice effect. Didn't beat the whole zombie hands trying to touch him. I think from last yeah, year. That was fantastic. Or, that was fantastic. Didn't beat that, but still. But let's just come to that normally with his typical eat, sleep, break, streak, which I think the whole eat, sleep thing is just ridiculous, especially to put on a part-timer. So, so, um, right, so, uh, so, yeah, okay, the match itself was pretty, I'm going to say, and I'm probably going to piss a lot of people off here, and I'm sorry if I do, uh, I thought the match itself was pretty shit, to be honest. Uh, it wasn't as good as it could have been. It did look like the Undertaker was hurt or damaged. It was just Brock doing a couple of uh, really bad German suplexes, a belly to belly, Undertaker fights back, you know, he did a couple of, he kicked out obviously the, uh, the F5, so obviously we know that Brock Lesnar obviously ended the streak, and he actually beat him, there's been so many reports apparently Undertaker wanted him to, he said during the match apparently, you know, Brock's going to get five because he changed the rule, uh, Undertaker got concussion, all that other stuff, I don't know what went on, I don't know what's been read, I don't know what you've read, you know, and stuff like that, so the match itself was quite bad, now do I think the streak could have should have ended, fuck no, it, we came to 22, 21 matches later, it didn't need to end, you know. Would I have minded if the streak had ended? I wouldn't have minded, no. But my problem was, I just didn't think that Brock Lesnar was worthy. If Triple H and uh, HBK couldn't get it done twice, then why should Brock Lesnar get it done? But I suppose it's one of those cliche things, I suppose. I suppose maybe Undertaker wants to retire. Maybe they did it for the pure fact shock value thing of letting Brock Lesnar end it because he's a beast, he's an animal, no one can beat him, you know. So I was angry, like all those faces and the... And obviously the guy in the front row, the coloured guy, the black man, has actually now become a famous meme because of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that face so, is definitely priceless. Yes. Obviously, he's become a famous meme. Obviously, because of that, it's quite cool. But I was shocked it's just them, really. Uh, he did three F5s. I expected, obviously, to kick out. He didn't kick out. I just didn't. I just stood there, sat there, blank. I just went, I can't believe they did that. It was unbelievable that they did that. I mean, like... I just don't think it was right. Uh, I don't think it needed to end, personally. I don't think Brock Lesnar was the right choice. I don't care. Comment, hate me. I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care if you're a Brock Lesnar guy. I didn't think he was where we tend the streak, and that's my opinion. So, go on, go on, shed your opinion on this on this match, um, you know, before I just get too out. Alright, alright. Right. Um, right, my, my opinion on the match is... Um, let's go to the next match. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, well, yeah, I've got to agree with you. It was hard to watch just because, I mean, I love Taker, but he's obviously getting on a bit, and it was just a very slow, clunking kind of match, and, and Lesnar's just a fucking, he's just a guy, yeah, he can be physically intimidating, and he can physically knock people about like Scott Steiner, but yeah. that's the problem is, no finesse to it, and yeah, maybe yeah. that's why he, you know, he, Taker got his concussion and shit, um, but, so, I mean, I wasn't paying much attention to the match, to be honest. I thought, all right, I thought, the taker's going to win. I can take a few minutes to chill out, from, you know, and then yeah, whatnot. Yeah. And then we just thought, like, oh, he's just going to have five. I thought, all right, let's watch the ping fall. Like, one, two, and then the free kick, and I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't scream, because I mean, my mate's flat, and he has name, as you see, but I just got on my <laughs> knees. I just started grabbing my mate's arm, and, just, and I went right up to his computer screen, because we were watching on the network. I went right up to his computer screen, and I was like, what? What is this? What's going on? What's just happened here, man? What the fuck Why? just happened? Why? You just uh, feel like being yeah. a Taker fan and your innocence has just been like, you just feel like Ian Watkins has just come up to you or Jimmy Savile has just, just caught you in your ghost and you're thinking, yeah, you're now surprised that that's happened, you know? Like, yeah. just, just can't believe it, it's, man. Like, yeah. I don't know, I, just, I still feel annoyed. I still feel pissed off, you know, that they did it, but I suppose they have to use this philosophy of all good things must come to an end sooner or later, you know, I mean, it's true, they had to do it sooner or later, so I don't think it was right. If anything, it should have, like, say, I think CM Punk should have ended it last year, so that way it was a nice even 20. Now it's 21-1, the OCD in me is going nuts, I don't actually have OCD, but you know what I mean, I'm just like, 
Oh, 21 and 1. No, it's all uneven. Let it be an even 20, you bastard. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird yeah. like that, isn't it? You know, but it's just like, I think it came so far that she didn't need to end it. You know, about, I don't know why they did yeah. it. Maybe, was it because I'm taking from retire now? I mean, is he going to retire now? The streak's ended. I mean, he's one year a day man match. There's been no word on it or anything like that. He's apparently got concussions and stuff like that. Well, no. Sure, we know. Um, remember when, uh, Austin... I mean, the match itself, years ago, sorry, uh, with, him and Undertaker, with him and Triple H in the cell, that was a fantastic match. The end of the yeah, era, he yeah. could have easily not ever come back to WWE after that. Yeah, I've, I've ever would have understood how good that match actually was, you know? So it was just like, and I don't see why they didn't just end it there, but obviously they decided to him come back. I mean, yeah, it was even talked they was going to let CM Punk end it. I would have been happy with that. I would have been okay the streaks ended, but you know, I can... Uh, maybe CM Punk you know, would still be here. Yeah, maybe he would, yeah, maybe he would, I don't know, so, yeah, it was, it was really, really quite, yeah. quite emotional, and I don't mean kind of the warrior emotional, and we'll get into that as well, uh, kind of emotional, because I'm a huge Taker fan, I'm sure you are, I'm sure a lot of oh, people yeah, listen yeah. to this now are Taker fans, they didn't want to see it end, you can see the shocked faces in the crowd, no one wanted it to end, you know, it's just, maybe, the, is that what was best for business? Well, maybe in a few yeah. years' time I can tell you, because right now I just don't think it was. So. Yeah. I personally anyway, would have thought they got up to, they would have thought they got up to like, you know, 25 at least, and then maybe break it. Yeah, yeah, I but, would have thought, yeah, move out, or just... Yeah. This, the, the, this is pure speculation, but I think what it might be is, um, Undertaker might be actually, might have some serious injuries, he's not, he's not wanting to say it, you know, because he only wrestles once a year, so he thought, yeah, he's I probably mean, fought in the ring to end it like that. Because remember back in WrestleMania 19, you know, Rock versus... Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rock, remember WrestleMania 19, Rock versus uh, Austin Free. And that was like fantastic match and Rock won. It was like cool. And then the next night, all of a sudden, oh shit, fucking Austin's retiring out of nowhere. Yeah. So exactly. I think, you know, because Austin didn't tell anyone. You know, then they, you know, that's why he fucking walked out in the first place because his back was knackered. You know. yeah, well, that and he was... Being a bit CM Punkish, but he was it was more of his back was knackered and he just didn't want to tell anyone. So <laughs> he was being a bit CM Punkish. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Oh, so I should say uh, CM Punk's being a bit Austinish. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but you, you know what I mean. He made it look like he was just upset with Booking, so he decided to fuck off. But what it yeah. was is, as he came out later on, it's like he, his back was knackered. He couldn't really wrestle anymore, and he you know he was just too proud proud to say anything about it. So I think that maybe that's why Undertaker just, just yeah. decided. Yeah, but basically, that's pure speculation. I mean, if it comes out like that, cool. But um, it's, it's your opinion. You're entitled to that. Look, they do get hurt. They do. Yeah. You get knackered, you know. It happens. So anyway, for the time of this, let's, let's move on before we go into yep, yep. a whole different debate about that. So we start after that match. Obviously, we go into the the Divas match, and you can hear during the crowd they all shout, "No one cares." No one, you know. It was just some massive fourteen yeah. Diva Battle Royal. Uh, which, if you look closely, you can actually see that uh, AJ actually made Naomi tap out uh, in that. I think that was at WrestleMania. I think you can actually see her grab her hand and forcefully actually make her submit, actually. So if you haven't, if you didn't see that, go back and watch it, because I think she did. I don't know if that was deliberate or not, but, yeah, I think so. So AJ wins, so let's just, move, again, move. Do you want to start? You want to... Uh, no, so I, I, I went to have a SIG, and then when I came back from the SIG, the match literally <laughs> just ended as I walked back, back in the room, so... Yeah, yeah, so exactly. it was perfect timing for me, really. I was trying to have a piss, go and grab a cig, you know, and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah. We had, all, we had all the fingers, even Marie, Emma, Brie Brella, Sana, you know, Rosa Mendes, I just heard myself shout an echo. Tamina, I thought it was going to be Tamina's night, I thought Tamina was going to finally get the title, but she didn't, you know, um, so I mean, they obviously changed plans, so there we go. Right, so we move on to the main event. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh yeah, Mushroom Man style, rest in peace, you crazy motherfucker. Uh, we move on to Daniel Bryan versus Orwin versus Batista in what I thought was going to be a completely shit match. I, I was going to go ready. I was going to like, oi, wife, go make me a sandwich. No, I'm joking. I was going to go get something to eat, but no. This match was actually at least probably the second best match of the night. It was full of action. It was, full, it was solid work. We saw this um, really good Batista RKO through the table where Orwin actually lands back first on the monitor. <laughs> Did you see that, by the way? Did you see oh, um, I didn't see the back on the. I mean, I saw the the RKO through the table, but like uh, yeah. uh, when it, it he was showing, it closely, uh, uh, his back lands straight on the monitor as he lands. It's yeah, just, I, saw, I saw that on the bottom any of the week, you know, the few days after, and I was like, you know, because it looked pretty bad. I thought, oh, he's selling that yeah. pretty well, and then when I saw the bottom any, like, oh, he's not selling that at all. That's okay. just that really happened. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it was weird because I saw it on the replay. I saw. 
and notice the thing and he did uh, he pushed himself forward and he got like back pain and you can see it trickles of blood so I was thinking oh he's landed straight on that monitor oh. so we had a great action a fast paced match it was like it's a good spot it was it was a, it was a good match just to say that it's not much I can really say on this match but in the end you know it was a solid B plus match <laughs> so, yeah, just, a, just a solid B plus just a solid B plus you know yeah. like uh, Four out of ten. Um, we'll this, 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 will this, this podcast get a solid B class? Probably not, you know. So, but so the match ends. Obviously, we've done it and winning by submission. And I just went fucking ape shit. I surprised I didn't yeah. wake my mum up. You know, I was just didn't wake my neighbours up. You know, I sort of didn't wake everyone in the neighbourhood. I said to I said to Michelle, if Daniel Bryan wins, I was going to go out and chat. Yes, 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 but I didn't. She, she, can't, she stopped me from doing that. <laughs> so I uh, wanted to. Uh, yeah, definitely wise. Uh, I did put on Facebook, you know, uh, if you woke it at the night at 4 a.m. Um, uh, it but I did go a little bit crazy. I had to keep my voice down, but I did go crazy. I just couldn't believe one. I was shot. I'm happy. I'm a big, deep Daniel, uh, Daniel Bryan follower. I've been following him since of Honor. I was so pleased that after everything he's gone through, they finally actually gave him it. Yeah, yeah. It was... Exactly. How... No, go on, yeah. No, uh, it was fantastic. I mean, like I said, it was predictable that was going to happen. Well, if you yeah, if you spend any time on like um, yeah. say like the wrestling Reddit or any other internet uh, internet wrestling community sites, yeah, it was, everyone was saying it's pretty obvious that's what's going to happen because you know it's the slow burn which they've been doing since SummerSlam. Problem yeah. is though, with the, you know the the booking they were doing at the end of the last year and early this year, it it's hard to tell if they actually had this as a long plan or if um, they just kind of pulled it out of their ass after the whole Royal Rumble fiasco, you know. I, I won't. Yeah, I won't sure. say which because I don't know. I, I'm completely, um, you know, split down the middle. Whether it, you know it was a long term plan or it, they just pulled it out their ass. But either way, it was came out. It turned out really fucking good. You know, because yeah, it did. I mean, yeah. I honestly thought, thought the match was going to be quite boring. I but I did. I mean, free sometimes, but it's a triple threat. It ended well, and it ended probably in the same style as maybe um, someone else at WrestleMania 20 might have won by submission in a near enough same submission when he won the world title. Uh, yeah, and uh, I wonder who that was. Um, oh, I remember it was Stevie Richards, wasn't it? Yeah, clearly Stevie Richards might have been Doctor yeah. Death, might have been the Sting. You know, maybe he finally came back for WrestleMania. Of course, it was yeah. Chris Benoit. I'm, I'm going to say it just in case people are wondering who won. Like, yes, Chris Benoit won yeah, the yeah. title triple threat WrestleMania 20 world submission. It was very like that. I don't think they were trying to copy that, but still. Uh, well, um, uh, Danny Bryan has a lot of Chris Benoit moves, doesn't he? Like a flying headbutt and like he that does, slightly, yeah. slightly inverted cross Yeah, he does have a lot of Chris Benoit moves. Yeah, he does. Like thinking about yeah. that, he really does. So, so, yeah, so that's WrestleMania 30. We need to push on for time now. Uh, yeah, one, yeah. one thing I will say is that the Hall of Fame this year was actually, the inductees were actually really good. Uh, except for obviously Mr. T went apparently over his speech about his fucking mum. Mother. Like, oh, there <laughs> yeah. is no other like a mother. Have you heard that song? He did from the 80s. It, it's a rap song where he just, it's, it sounds like that. Mother. There is no other oh, like wow. a mother. Uh, <laughs> so he goes about his mother. After this, go YouTube it, and anyone who's listening to this, go YouTube it as well. Mr. T Mother. <laughs> Mr. T Mother. So he's a new mother. You know, do that classic song. But yeah. Yeah, the, uh, yeah uh, he went on about his mother. No, go on. Uh, I made a joke about that too. You know, it's like, uh, I felt like, oh, because I, I didn't see the Hall of Fame ceremony till like the very last minute before WrestleMania, like on the day. And I was like, everyone's going yeah. on about the fucking, you know, there's memes on Facebook, it's like, you know, Mr. T, mother, a, a tweet by Jericho saying, uh, Mr. T's mother, I invented that. And I was like, what's everyone going on about? And then I watched the Hall of Fame speech, I'm like, oh my god, Wait, okay, you have a mother, yeah, you have a, yep, yep, you definitely have a mother, Mr. T, and um, do you want to go on about when you were at WrestleMania, maybe? You, you know, those two times you were at WrestleMania, no, you don't want to, oh no, you, you, you're just going on with the mother part, okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> You just want to keep going about the mother, yeah. Never mind, WrestleMania, WrestleMania 1, Hogan, no, nothing that, not comment. Okay, yeah, your mother, yeah, keep going about your mother. Keep going about your mother. Uh, and, uh, I mean, obviously, I can understand WWE getting a bit annoyed about that. I can understand why they did, I mean, obviously. But they were good inductions this year. Uh, glad to see Warrior in there, glad to see Jake the Snake in there, glad to see Lita in there, you know, um, it's just, just a good Hall of Fame. So, so let's move on to Raw the night after. Um, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to save this for the next podcast or save this one, but we're going to save this one anyway. We like to—I'd like to say um, 
such a huge shock about the Warrior, uh, what happened, that he literally died only a couple of days, you know, just after being on Raw, uh, on this Raw, I think it was one of first mainly he showed up and literally passed away, only a thingy, uh, only a few hours, I think, or a day after it, so it's, it's really, it's really sad and it's really shocked me, I'm sure it shocks a lot of you as well, I still can't get over it, I, I, I woke up this morning and read it on Facebook, um, it was horrible to read. It really was. It, I think it's been an autopsy now that he, it was a heart problem or some sort of heart disease he had. If you look at back the promo, I, th- I think it was he knew that he was going to die, and that's why he was saying it. People were just saying that. I didn't believe it. I was in denial a lot about it, you know. But anyway, rest in peace to you, Warrior. You know, you did a lot. Thank you for everything you did for you know the WWF, the WWE. You know, it's still a shock that you're gone. You know, but. Yeah, if we would we would cue your music right now as in a one minute tribute to you, but we can't because copy because YouTube will take us down. <laughs> so uh, it's alright, I can just hum it. Yeah. So let's like slap a photo of the warrior with a rest in peace, which I'll probably sure I'll do anyway. But yeah, but yeah, thank you, Warrior. We miss you. You know, I'm glad WWE did the 10 bowls, 10, 10 bills told you. You really did deserve it. You deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. You know, you had your problems backstage and everything like that. But yeah, we, yeah, just rest in peace, man. Hashtag rest in peace to Warrior. So, so let's move on to Raw. Yep, yep. Uh, Raw in New Orleans. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know if you want I'm saying about the Warrior. Or you no, you've, uh, you've, you've pretty much, uh, I'll just be saying what you said basically again. So it's, um, uh, I'll say um, I'm up saddened by it but I was shocked by it you know and hey, it's not like a no I just liked the warrior I'm just know, not saddened know, about it as much but uh, it's but it was genuinely shocking though and obviously I feel bad for his family and shit it's, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to be an asshole and say like no, oh, no, you, know, what, you know the warrior but no, no, no it's um, we didn't know him personally did we, we none of us never yeah. met him he was a a good guy I'm a bit sad you know because he was one of my favourites you know other than Undertaker you know he was a good but yeah it happened so, oh yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, as a kid, he was a big yeah. favourite man as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, and he's done a few days as well, yeah, so... Yeah, we'll save that for another. So we move on to Raw, which is yeah, probably yeah. one of the best Raws of all fucking time. Um, so yeah. we open with Raw. I just found my notes. I actually lost my notes in the, on, on WrestleMania. We had to stop, and uh, I'm sure I'm sure Pete or Jack has edited this out already. But yeah, I lost my notes. I found my notes for Raw. So we start off with Raw. Opens with, obviously, the new WWE World Champion. And can I just say this before we start? WWE World Champion, I do hate the fact there's still two titles. I really... Yeah, I must admit like, it. Like, yeah, Daniel Bryan does not carry them well because they both, they fucking bury him. You know, they, they, you know yeah. the titles do what Triple H could not. L- literally, yeah, he puts them on his chest and you're like, well, can you see it? All you see is like a beard and like two belts, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so I do wish they'd change it because uh, I'm sick of saying it. I don't know if it's really even pleasurable for them just to hold two titles around, but maybe they'll change it one day. Well, I, I think what I read about it is um, it, Hunter and Orton, uh, Hunter, sorry, Triple H and Orton. Uh, they really love the big gold belt, you see, and they don't want to, you know, they want to make sure it stays in uh, for a while. And I'm guessing they don't want to get rid of the WWE title because they've, you know, they've barely had that a year, haven't they? They only introduced it uh, last year when The Rock won it. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a case of like. They won it when some simple part time. And I took it off a person that didn't probably need to be ended it, but I'm a butthurt seeing punk fan and I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I am. So, no, yeah, not really. <laughs> Uh, so let's just go on one little thing, one little small thing. Before, let's go back to that streak match. What also a little bit annoyed me was Bot's kind of a part timer as well. Uh, he's not. He kind of is. He kind of isn't. I would prefer someone that was a full time roster to end the streak and not someone that only really shows up when he feels like it. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so you, you, you sneezed right here yeah. on the wrestling podccast between Peter Metal Ed and Raven. <laughs> and people that probably will not be watching it on the WWE Network. <laughs> and they won't be on the network. Okay, so there we go. So yeah, so it starts off with um, uh, Daniel Bryan comes out, people going crazy, these yeses, there's fucking people grabbing people, their children in the air, people grabbing someone else from next to them, throwing him up in the air while he's doing the yes sign. You know, the yes movement has not died. I'm glad they brought it back because I hate the whole no movement. I thought they were going to kill off the yes movement, they didn't. So he comes out, people shall you have earned it. <laughs> Uh, you deserved that, it. And that was just, yeah, it was a genuine treat to watch the, uh, the audience react like, react like that. I was sat there smiling, happy as a sound boy. I generally, I couldn't stop smiling. The grin on my face was literally legit. I just couldn't, I feel like I've been smiling in the wind for like eight hours and my face is stuck that way. <laughs> you know, so it was great. It felt so good because, you know, everyone, you know, old Daniel Bryan, he's up there. But I know, I've been following him since Ring of Honor. I've known him since Ring of Honor days when he used to do the 
really weird like kind of cape gimmick you know with a bald head and the beard you know um oh, i've seen those pictures on the internet and uh I, <laughs> I i i destroyed my internet after that <laughs> yeah just so yeah they, so yeah so those photos made someone destroy the internet yeah that's weird i i didn't destroy my internet but you know there we go but yeah so i've been following since then i did think he has earned it he is he's talented he deserves to be in there as it was talk of he was unhappy, you know, but I'm glad they did it. So, moving straight on, we have Triple H comes out. Sorry, I had someone at my door there. Triple H comes down and says, I'm not good in this ring of you because of what I'm going to do to you, you know. And then, and then Brian goes, really? So he goes out to his face and goes, yes. And he goes, well, you're going to be defending that title tonight against me. Yeah. And then basically comes out. So it's like, yes, oh my God, already. Like, oh my God, man, this just made me hard. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah. So but I, thought, okay. I still don't get it, though. They've still they've not done anything with Vinnie Mac. I thought Vinnie Mac would at least shown up at WrestleMania 30 and there'd be yeah. some kind of, you yeah. know, like, um, he'd come in and say, hey, Triple H, you're abusing your power. You can't face for the title and run the company, etc. You know. Yeah, that's, that's true. We didn't, maybe he just didn't want to be involved. I don't know. So. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, who knows. But that's, spe- <laughs> that's speculation for another time when, because uh, for all we know, some shit could develop over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly. So we've just spoiled some spoiler stuff that we don't even know about. Shit. Now, now, now apparently we're haters now, you know. Stop spoiling stuff. Stop putting stuff on Facebook. Don't go on Facebook then, you know. Super bad. So he comes out and says he's got to defend the title tonight against me, uh, which obviously him. And obviously I, I was enjoying this straight away, but I was also scared at the same time because I thought, okay, now he's obviously won at WrestleMania. Are they really going to ship him the belt literally a day after Raw? You know, I don't know it can happen. I was a bit worried, you know. I was thinking, oh shit, you know, is it really going to happen? Um, stuff like that. <laughs> but, yeah, what about you? Did you did you think maybe... I mean, obviously, you, you're you living in Prediction Avenue. You thought, obviously, that he was going to keep the title. Like, kind uh, of, yeah. You I'm not sure. I mean, I, I thought... Yeah, I, I pretty much thought, like, they're not going to do, like, be an absolute twat. I knew what they did, like, for two... Well, two or three months straight on the run, you know, SummerSlam. Uh, what's the October paper you called again these days? Oh, Hell in a Cell and Night of Champions. Sorry, I, I'm still remembering Unforgiven and No Mercy. <laughs> Yeah, they were supposed to have cut hell in the cell, but they never did, so... Yeah, but, you know, I thought... Like, you know, that was just obviously the bit long build-up to, the, like, this part of the story. So I thought, they're not going to take it straight off him, and the match didn't even begin, did it, really? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, no, it didn't actually kind of, yeah, it's kind of had a game plan. But we'll talk about that later. So let's move on to the first match of Raw, of the 8th, of the 4th, 2014. It's like with the Wyatt family versus Big E, Langston, John Cena, and Sheamus. And my God, this has to be probably donated for match of the year because it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. It was one of the best six-man tags I've ever seen. It was filled with non-stop, competitive, solidness action. I can't even put it into words. I'm just... Sounded like I'm on. I'm reading off a fucking typo right now. This is solid. Let's use the petto. Like it was a fantastic match. It really was such a great opener. You know, with just like. Whatever, really, and basically it ends with Bray Wyatt hitting the sister Abigail. I can't remember who he hit it on. It might have been Big E, I think it was, and obviously he gets the win. So the Wyatt family's still going over, but this match, wow. That was just, yeah, just wow. Just, did you think it was wow? I thought it was brilliant, realistically. What do you think? Me? What do yeah. I think? Was- <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to think of a joke related to a wrestler. I couldn't think of one. So, but no, I'll get, re- I'll get, re- I'll get real. Um, but yeah, yeah, for... Yeah, definitely for the opening of Raw, absolutely fantastic match. If anything, I thought that would have been like, with, with the exception of the main event that actually happened, I thought you know that would have been something to say for the main event of Raw. But you know, there you go. No, I mean, it best was, way best it was, way to start off Raw, you know. Yes, exactly. I mean, I thought it was a fantastic match. I put it on Facebook, you know, <laughs> same as plug Facebook. Um, yeah, I put it on there, and a lot of people agreed it was. It was a great opener. It, it really was. I got out now, so we're gonna move on. Do you have you written down? Do you wanna move on? Do you wanna do you wanna say or do you wanna move on what was next? Do you know what was next? Did you write that down or not? Um I did not write that down, sir, no, <laughs> unfortunately. Well um, we got the first of Bo Dallas, Bo Lee. We had the first Bo Lee promo actually on Raw was on this promo and the same with Adam Rose as well. So let's come back now to later on let's fast forward now let's talk about Bo Dallas um now I don't have a high opinion of Bo Dallas I just know that he's an, he's quite a not, well, not annoying actually I can't really describe it uh 
he's not a bad wrestler at all, really. You know, like, I think maybe with the, I mean, because WWE did something with him years ago, ages ago, when you had the single way barrier. I can't remember if you were maybe watching at that time. Um, no, no, no. Um, just, uh, yeah, so he comes to Raw, he basically beats Wade Barrett like twice or once, and then basically he never shows up again. Uh, so he's obviously just the Bo Leaf, like, sort of thing, you know, quite, I mean, he's, he's an okay wrestler, but, I don't know, I think maybe the gimmick, maybe he needs to do something done with that, and maybe something more than just jobbing. I think he needs to be, at least get there in the mid-card section, get in there, not just face Kobe Kingston every week, you know, he needs to, he needs to get up there. So, so yeah, what about you? What do you yeah, think about Dallas? Well, uh, after the revelation you saw me earlier that he is uh, Bray Wyatt's brother and whatnot, uh, yeah. I think, well, there you go. I mean, if they do end up, like, squandering him a bit, you've always got, like, um, you know, like an angle you can play there, you know, like, you know, him trying to get him to join the, you know, the Wyatt family and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I, I doubt it, but I mean, maybe, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a, bit of a weird one, Bo is, but I suppose, you know, obviously what Bray Wyatt does is obviously weird as well, so, there we go. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that is, so, obviously... I'm kind of ecstatic because I know that this is one of the first of while they're bringing NXT people forward. This is fantastic. We saw Adam Rose and even Paige a little bit later on. So we see three basically edits will come forward. And my God, that is pretty much what made the Raw show. So we move on to the second match. Fandango, Anson Array versus Santino and Emma. I didn't even, I didn't write notes about this match because I just, I just can't be arsed with it. Yeah, uh, when I was a short sure. match, I, Sant- yeah. Santino probably dancing, Fandango dancing, Cobra. Uh, I think she hits like the Emma Lock or something or whatever, some sort of submission, and then them getting the win. So, did you did you write that down? Or did you not? No, in fact, I'm actually trying to erase this part of the conversation from my mind as we're, <laughs> as we're speaking it. Um, okay, well, wrong, Santino can be like a you know a nice little comic relief every now and again, but this yeah, the whole thing with Fandango is just. They're just well, doing it every week. It's becoming boring. It's becoming shit. Yeah. It's becoming like. Well, Although we're not uh, covering uh, last night's Raw on this uh, particular podcast, I uh, can say they just do the exact same match again next week, so yeah. it's just, it's just there you go. Just come out, dancing, a bit of hip toss, a bit of Cobra, and if there's Divas involved, a bit of two second Diva action, then either Fandango will get the win, and then Seamus, Fandango, Seamus, uh, sorry, Santino, Santino, uh, Seamus, Santino, Fandango, and that's repeating the process. So, yeah. So let's move on from that horrible thing, you know. Uh, we move yeah. on, obviously, to Paul <laughs> Heyman and Chris coming out. Obviously, them cutting. Uh, Paul Heyman, again, is just amazing, the cutting promos. He's probably one of the best. He, he's up there with Bray Wyatt. He knows what to do. He knows what to say. He knows how to do it. He knows how to work the industry. It's awesome. They come out. They cut a promo. I'm not going to say much about this. They cut a promo and say how they told everyone so it was going to happen. Uh, they show, I think they showed a couple of photos. I'm not sure if they did that last in yesterday's war or this war, but yeah. Um, but Bock Lesnar could get it done and stuff like that. Yeah. So, do, what do you what do you think? Do you think? Yeah. I don't know. What did you think on that promo? I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. You just brought up the ending of the streak again. I, I'm kind of in tears. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, but, yeah. No, it's not, it's not, it's not, I think it's just as well um, the, he has Paul Heyman behind him because fucking Brock Lesnar over a microphone it's disturbing you know, it, remember the, the whole that- um, casket bit from a few rolls back you know when uh, when it cast it down and then like uh, Brock Lesnar's like I know you're here on the taker let's do this yeah, yeah and then let's then do this yeah. like, you got guys oh like doing yeah that, oh yeah. god what does the Brock say oh you know oh yeah, because they didn't have Paul Heyman like selling, you know, selling that through some really good promos on that Raw. I mean, I think people probably may have been start throwing stuff at Brock, you know. I know, I was just like, can we a cunt and just like throw stuff? Yeah, because Brock obviously no mic skills, not whatsoever. He can't. He's easy to pull to back him. If he didn't have Paul Heyman back him, I, I, I don't really like him. He's quite arrogant. He just seems to be the sort of person to sign stuff if you've ever met him, which is a bit of an arsehole anyway, to be honest. And such stuff I've heard anyway about him. But he's easy to pull. He's easy to Lesnar. He needed him to lease, uh, he needed Paul Heyman to get him over. So, so we move on from that one. Move on from the grown crushing this, which was a streak. Uh, we had an Adam Rose uh, promo airs. After that, obviously him in the bus. Um, hey, it's party he, time. All the time, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother trying mimicking his voice because that was the time. Yeah, so. Uh, it's but awesome. the I was 
it's sad, you know, and then he has a lollipop, and I don't know why, the, the gimmick kind of made me cringe at first, I thought, yeah. this guy's coming to war, I mean, we've had, we've had our fair share of, like, things like Kenzo Suzuki and, like, stuff like that, but this guy, I can't really see this guy actually wrestling and winning a match, and I mean, what kind of, t- you know, I mean, he's, he's talented, but still, like, so that is, so I'm already, I mean, like, wow, I mean, I'm marking out because two NXT promos are coming out, and one of the people did say, what if Paige came out tonight, uh, apparently, some spoiler photos have been revealed that Paige was backstage that night anyway but you know it's not me I don't believe everything I read online nor should anyone else um, so uh, before this we see obviously all in number two still got told by Stephanie McMahon that obviously they're going to be facing the Usos for the tag team titles tonight um, a little bit kind of weeded out there I thought they were going to win the title so that match is after the match started off okay um, but to if we told the match ending which is basically ending counting out and Batista Norman basically just crippling the Usos with the stairs Batista bomb on the stairs and other stuff and yeah just like that was pretty much it so they basically ended it for them I think I don't know if anyone came down the ship uh, no, I don't I, think they no I don't think so um, yeah. It's pointless asking me what I thought about this match because I skipped it. I mean, I like the Usos and whatnot, but Orton and Batista, I thought, oh, uh, it's just going to be a squash match. So I just decided I just, I'm not bother watching it, you know. Yeah, it technically was, so. <laughs> I, yeah, I know it makes me very unprofessional and shit, but there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If yeah. anyone's ever seen any one of my Pete the Metalhead videos, then yeah, you, you know how unprofessional I am. <laughs> Shameless plug number two. Yeah, if you Oh, yeah. <laughs> right here. In <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> Yeah, right here. Ian, your living room, or nor your Mac, on your tablet, or even on your bloody iPhone. I don't know. Who the hell uses a Mac? He'll, he'll, um, both of our channels, this will be uploaded on YouTube channels anyway, but yeah, if you haven't seen any of these other videos, yeah, just check them out, they are good, yeah, strikes off movies and shit, so yeah. So yeah, we move on to see that RVD was returning, so RVD finally comes back after, um, uh, after taking a long hiatus, I don't actually know why he took leave. I think because he couldn't be asked, or because it's Rob Van Dam and he wants to do weed again. I don't really know. So <laughs> I think he just had a short I mean, term contract, and they just probably have him back again on another short term contract. You know? yeah. He was in that Intercontinental Title Tournament that was on Raw. He got through, so again, we can't talk about that yet. But obviously, he has been in that Intercontinental Title Tournament. So he faces Sandel. This is what pissing me off that Sandel has basically become a jobber. Davy is Sandel. A lot, a lot of people agree with me about this, but he's a fucking hard worker. He's a talented wrestler, and he should be doing a lot better than what he is now. He yeah. deserved at least to be. It might sound stupid. I thought when he had that briefcase, I thought, right, this is it. This is where you know WWE is just going to bend us over and say, right, we're going to stick it in, and we're going to use lube this time, and we're not going to go in dry. We're going to make him world champion. Same with Dolph Ziggler. I'm a huge backer. They're both talented wrestlers, and now he's gone. He lost the briefcase match and now he's just been standing under a giant penis while he's been pissed on his job for literally the last like a month or so so he jobs to RVD this match Sandell um, came back a little bit but RVD does obviously the same as he usually does with a spin kick and a job ends yeah, into yeah. a foggy foggy smash, and then basically it's over yeah you got anything to say on that or not really? I, mean, I was kind of pissed because I mean uh, there was a lot of rumours going around that RVD was going to be one of the uh, you know the un- unannounced uh, guest people in the 30 man battle royale the previous night but yeah. he wasn't and then just all of a sudden, so I thought, all right, so it must have been just pure speculation. You know, he probably, he probably wasn't, you know, so he's probably not got anything to do with WWE. And then all of a sudden, shh, he just, he's on Raw. No build-up, no suspense, no nothing. No, like, no, not even, like, one little promo, like, you know, the last week saying, hey, Abby needs coming back or something like that. And I was just like, here he is, job to stand out, bye. You know, it's just like, I mean, you know, fair enough, he's getting on a bit, but, I mean, he's still, I mean, he's still pretty, you know, uh, no, lim- limber and flexible for you know. Yeah, he works exactly. He does. He does work a good match. I don't think age has nothing to do with it. I think he work, He still can work a good match. I just wish he was given a decent run. To one. So we move forward. I didn't write about any promos and stuff. We've not wrote about every promo and backstage segment in these reviews and stuff. So if you're wondering why, oh, you missed this part, you missed that part. Well, fuck you because I'm not writing down every little moment. I'm tired when Raw's on live. I can't note down every little thing that happens. No, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. So so we. What backstage segments do we have anymore? Just basically Triple H and Steph will say something to Orton and Batista. That's it. I literally can't think of any other backstage segments that happen at all. You know, with the, with the exception of the odd interview with that, uh, what's her name, uh, Renee, something or I can't remember her second name. Other than that, this like, I remember hey, back in the old days, yeah. you know, used to be awesome. backstage segments left, right and centre, comedy bits, serious bits, you know, just, yeah. now there's no bother anymore of them. Shame, right. really. Too decent. So, moving forward. Sorry, 
Yeah, moving out. Right, you tell me what was the next match then? What What was the next match? What, what, what did we move into after that? What was the fifth match in the night? Oh, I'm trying to remember now because uh, there's there's two right next to each other. It's just oh, it completely slipped me. Oh, do you oh do you not have night shift now for this one? Uh, no, not on me. Because uh, well, uh-huh. like like yourself, uh, I had a complete computer malfunction. Uh, okay, no, that's right. No, it's no shame in it. Obviously, we I can't. I have to take notes. Otherwise, that's how I do reviews. I remember a lot better. So we moved on to Rey Mysterio versus Bad News Barrett. Uh, see, Bad News Barrett actually wrestled in the first time in ages after basically doing the whole podium thing, which went from a medium podium to a fucking huge podium. So he comes out. Um, hang on, my Xbox is going to shut down. No, you do not. Hang on, two minutes, two seconds. Right, okay. Uh, so he comes out. Uh, this match wasn't a bad match. Again, if Ray and Bad New... Uh, sorry, Ray Mysterio. Did I, did I say Ray Mysterio or did I say Kobe Kingston? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so Mysterio, yeah. I think so, yeah, Ray Mysterio. So he comes out. I think he goes on the mic and says, I think I've got some bad news for you. I'm not sure. So this wasn't an actual bad match uh, between these two. It was um, it was some solid work from back and forth. Booing going towards Ray and Yay and going to was Barrett every time, you know, typical, like, punch me, boo, punch me, yay, boo, yay. Uh, they go back and forth, typical stuff, really. Um, I think uh, Ray Mysterio hits a, hits a 619, he then goes to the turnbuckle, Barrett stops him, and then basically elbows him on the head while he's on the turnbuckle, and he gives some of those ball hammer hammers quite brutally, you know, so, so yeah, so that wasn't, that was an okay match, actually, probably the most disappointing match of the night, but that was, I'd actually more better work done with Barrett, because, again, a talented wrestler needs the right stuff. I didn't like Bad News Barrett before, but you know, I think I've, yeah, I've, I've gone towards it. What about you? Did you like, did you well, like Bad News Barrett? Well, yeah. The thing is, um, as I've only started watching again recently, uh, I've not seen any of Wade Barrett back in the day with the whole Nexus storyline and whatnot. But when I started watching again, uh, yeah, he had kind of one match and then he just disappeared for months and he came back as Bad News Barrett at first. I didn't like it at all because he just he literally just came out and said like. You're all fat people, and it's Thanksgiving, I've, and I've, you uh, have clogged uh, arteries, and that's it. I just thought, what? Are, are you gonna do? Are you gonna like feud with anyone? You know, are you gonna like take the piss out of anyone? No, it's like the audience, blur, and it's just like, <laughs> oh my god, this is yeah, so bad. Yeah. And I thought it's not because of it; it's it just bad. so badly written. And then by the time of Elimination Chamber, he was still doing it, but I, th- I think it was just Stockholm Syndrome by this point, because I was really starting to like it, you know, just like... Yeah, he came out, literally, like, knew enough after every match, didn't he, like, and just yeah. said, yeah, that was... I wish I actually did find I actually liked, I liked about that, so that was actually quite funny. So, yeah, so we yeah. move on, we move on. Who do we move on to? Well, of course, we move on to the debating Alexander Rusev, Alexander Rusev, which, uh, again, another talented wrestler. I heard that they were going to push this guy, and I'm glad they have it. From NXT, Alexander Rusev. Rusev? Rusev? Yeah, I was having a debate with a friend of mine earlier today about how to pronounce it. He's a talented yeah. fucker, so he's obviously facing Zack Ryder, so we see Zack Ryder in like fucking ages. Oh, oh yeah, I was like, I'm shot, holy shit, Zack Ryder's on Raw. Ryder, woo woo woo, yeah, you know it, you know, so, um, yeah, uh, so obviously we just know straight off what is this match going to be. It's going to be a squash match. It's going to be a jobber match. Is that right? Even going to have a chance to attack back against this Bulgarian beast? I think he's called or Hulk or whatever the fuck. No, of course he's not. Obviously he doesn't. He just basically crushes him. He does some amazing super kick work and basically ends it with um, the camel clutch, which is obviously has a name. He was fucking impressive. He's always been impressive. Um, so, again, I'm hoping he's not just going to be jobbing for all of his career. I'm hoping they actually do put him in a decent storyline at some point and not just basically uh, keep him jobbing. So, so we move on. Uh, do you remember that match? Do you want, do you want to add anything in there? Oh, Rusev. Um, yeah, uh, the squash match... It- It'd be pissing me off with the whole, um, you know, for the last two months, because he debuted at the Royal Rumble, didn't he? Yeah. And then, last two months, they've had these stupid fucking promos, where it's just like, you know, like, hey, those lasagna, hey, you weak American pigs, uh, this is Alexander Rusev, and it's like, and then she gives the mic to him, and he just speaks entirely in, uh, what is it, I assume, Romanian, or uh, Bulgarian? Romanian, yeah, something like Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know there's people out there who speak Bulgarian, but to the, the majority of English and uh, Spanish-speaking audience, I assume there's a Spanish-speaking audience, why else have the Spanish announcer table? <laughs> um, right. You know, it's just like, that's going right over our heads. You know, for all we know, he, he could just be saying his shopping list. You know? yeah. <laughs> and he kept doing that for two goddamn months, and it was just like, I was just begging, please, just put him in a squash match. If you want him to get over, 
Put him in a fucking squash match. And there you go, they did it at last. That's what they do nowadays, isn't it? I mean, do you remember when Damien Sandell first came in? He didn't, like, he refused to wrestle matches and promos. So they just, they just build uh, it. I wasn't watching wrestling back then, unfortunately. Um, okay. uh, interesting fact for any uh, listeners. Uh, Raven has watched wrestling, as, as far as I know, since he was a kid. I watched it, but around 2003, 2004, basically, I stopped watching, and I started watching again last year, so there's a lot of stuff I've missed out on and whatnot. I've been catching up bits in here. It's just just in case anyone's listening and wondering, like, what the hell I'm going on about. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching this since 1998, 1997, probably, and non-stop ever since then. There was a time where I had to stop watching because I didn't have cable for a while, so I couldn't watch it, but I always found a way to get it back again. So those parts you miss when you stop watching, because obviously we're Attitude Era boys. You know, we grew up where it was boobs and fucking hardcore weapons and great short oh, yeah. time and fists and bossing and the fingers and the swearing and anything basically goes realistically because of WCW Wars. Uh, we grew up obviously on that. So, truthfully, did you stop because you, f- you found WWE boring? Or uh, you- well, it was because, I mean, they were still doing like some violent stuff or whatnot during the uh, mid- early mid-90s, but around 2003, um, I don't know, I was just getting tired of wrestling, you know, because I was going through puberty and shit, so I mean, I, I was just getting interested in different things and other things and shit. So, um, yeah, I kind of stopped watching it, and then I came back for WrestleMania 20, and then I stopped watching right after WrestleMania 20 again, so, I mean, just because uh, I thought, it's WrestleMania 20, how can I not watch that? It's like, that's going to be the biggest event ever. And then, you know, I didn't realise 10 years later, you know, I'd still be alive for WrestleMania 30. <laughs> Yeah, and you realize ten years later that winner of that WrestleMania, the winner of the main event, and that became murder and killed everyone. Oh dear! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This, this podcast got dark. <laughs> yeah, it did. Sorry, I just you know I don't, well, I don't want to course, start off like this series, but uh, as is as is your name, Dark Vampire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's where dark as dawn is like a dark. This is the darkest timeline. Well, I'm glad so, you got back. I'm hoping you'll catch up. I'm also in the you missed. I'm glad. I'm literally. I am glad you got back. You know, it, it is worth it. You know, I'm glad that WWE right now is becoming quite exciting to watch. You know? Yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> that. So anyway, so let's move on. We find that the Ultimate Warrior is here. This is going to be quite hard for me to talk to. I know, obviously, people have their feelings, opinions about wrestlers that die. You know, maybe I've been watching it since 1998. I get obviously attached to these people. Some people think, well, they didn't know them. I'm not going to obviously cry about them. It's fair enough. They have their opinions. I have mine. It's very so Warrior comes out. Um, if I wasn't straight, if he wasn't that strapped for time, I'd probably read out the entire promo that I've actually got written down in front of me that he read out. Uh, a lot of it was about, you, we are the warriors, he will always live on in our hearts, you have to work your ass off in this industry, and stuff like that. He puts on a uh, little, obviously a warrior mask, uh, which he actually looked good. But a lot of people say he looked, uh, I mean, do you, remember, do you remember watching that? Do you honestly think, in that promo, that the warrior looked ill at all. Did you think he looked ill, or do you think he looked fine? Mm, well, I mean, he looks like he's obviously, um, you know, he was 54 years old. So, I mean, he was, he, I wouldn't say he looked ill, ill. He's just obviously just looking a bit uh, old and whatnot. Yeah, people were saying he didn't but, look well, or he just looked like he, you know, he had problems. I think he looked fine, you know. I mean, he did the old ring, ring, ring shake thing, you know, did, 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 you know, like... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. See, like... Uh, well, for me, it was just, uh, like, I'm only speaking now in the mindset I had on that night before, the day before he um, died. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just like, oh, this is going to be painful. Uh, and then he, you know, then he comes out, puts the mask on, I'm like, oh, this is painful. Uh, he's, then he, luckily, he didn't, he didn't go too gibberish with it. He actually, he, what he said actually was a bit more coherent than what he usually does. Yeah, and I yeah. thought, and I thought, oh, well, there you go, it's all right, I can't be mad at him. And then, um, and then the day after, it turns out I really couldn't be mad at him. <laughs> I was just like, uh, yeah. If I, if I say anything about Raw, <laughs> his, his Raw promo, anything nasty at this moment, I am going to get fucking shit for it. Yeah. But, I mean, but no, I, I say, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not being nasty about it now or whatnot. I just thought, yeah, but like I said, this is purely my mindset from when I actually watched it. The day after, yeah, I thought, oh me. dear, yeah. Uh, Especially the parallels of what he was saying to what I said. Yeah, I mean, no one was no one was saying that obviously that Roy gave the best amazing promo ever because I mean, he did. You know, he did, he did what he did his best. He did, you know, he just he did what he did. You know, like he, he wasn't no Bray Wyatt or Paul Heyman, but you know, again, rest in peace, Roy. You 
but awesome, you know, good talent, just, yeah, you know, I hope the support goes towards your family, your daughters, you know, like your Hall of Fame speech, I keep watching that over and over again, you know, and just, just still can't believe it, it happened, like, so soon, but, yeah, I'm hoping, if he wasn't any pain, and he, well, he isn't now, I really hope he is, and I'm hoping his wife, I think, yeah, I think if he still married his wife, or whatever, his lover, and his, his daughters, and all his family are okay, you know, so, but, um, yeah, Obviously, the Warrior, I'm not sure we had problems there again. Uh, obviously, big respect to his family, big respect to his daughters and stuff like that. So, I think I already said that anyway. So, we come to Paige. Uh, not Paige, sorry. Uh, just, <laughs> we come to AJ. She comes out after WrestleMania. She basically still says, I am the champion still. And at this point, I'm a fan of AJ, but the whole... It's getting a little bit repetitive what she's doing, you know? Like, I kind of sometimes wish she had actually talented divas actually face her. So she comes out, Vicky basically comes out, uh, I think it does Vicky come out and congratulates her, I'm not really too sure. And basically, she basically says there's no one that can beat her, blah, blah, blah. And that's when Paige comes out. Fucking Paige. And my God, not only does she look fucking amazing, she's an amazing wrestler for the indie days. We've been, everyone's been wanting Paige to come up. And the Divas division has just got, well, by God, by God, it's Paige, it's Paige. You know, like, I'm just going all JR there because I basically went all JR on the night, you know, so. Paige comes out uh, basically just congratulates AJ really AJ's obviously the typical cunt that she is and go I don't believe you a slap her and turns into a match we have basically a short-ish match hits the Paige turn Paige is obviously the new Divas champion I was everywhere in there my cheese was everywhere my, I think my, my wife was thrown everywhere and they where she landed on that night, <laughs> you know, I was ecstatic. I went a little bit too loud than I should have done, uh, but yeah, I was so happy. I wouldn't even, I not even the fact, I was happy that the fact she was even on Raw, realistically. I didn't even matter. She, it didn't even matter to me if she didn't even win the title when she won at Extreme Rules. I didn't give a fuck. But winning the title was better. Now we've got, you know, AJ was set to lose anyway, um, so hopefully Paige will keep it. He had her first match on Raw, which obviously was a job and match. But I'm hoping they will. So we've had three NXT people come up from War One, obviously debating. We've had got Adam Rose and Bo Dallas still to come, but yeah, that was fucking amazing. So what about you? Did you did you know Paige? Um, well, I Paige before this. Uh, no, I, did, I had no idea who Paige. I think I've heard a mention on some of the forums or whatever, but I never because, like I said, I've, I've only caught little bits and bit bobs of like NXT yeah, here and there and whatnot. But um, I was quite surprised to find out she was from Norwich. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what I'm really hoping for is, um, you know, because she's from Norwich, they'll end up having Alan Partridge as a manager, you know, the whole angle like that. <laughs> that would be amazing. But that's just me dreaming, of course. But, but yeah, um, but, yeah the, the match itself, yeah, it's okay. It's a bit of a squash match and whatnot. And then, um, well, but I must admit, though, I didn't like the, the finish at all. It was because she obviously botched it. Um, you know, that page, uh, was it, took out the page turner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it happened, it happens, I mean. Yeah, but, yeah. But, I but, think it, but, you know, but, but the result of it, though, I'm quite surprised, they actually, yeah, they would just give, like, a new NXT rookie, just the, the title, just that, you know, that, you know, first first run out, which was quite yeah. surprising. Yeah, so, but, that's uh, a I was, ple- I was pleased with it, was, but, yeah. I was pleased with it, but, I mean, yeah, the, the botched ending just kind of, yeah, so, I mean, right, yeah, the so, whole, yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> I obviously thought I thought Tamina was going to get the victory to be honest at WrestleMania. I'm glad she came back. I'm hoping WWE now will do a lot for her. Uh, and actually, she came and won the title straight away. I do like AJ. I mean, they're both good wrestlers. I'm hoping this will obviously lead to a feud because AJ is obviously set to do a rematch. So that might lead to extreme rules. Um, I think everyone's been wanting an AJ versus Paige feud. I know I've been wanting one. So I'm hoping... She didn't get involved in Monday Night, just gone, which again, I'm not going to say much about, but I was kind of hoping she would, so I don't know what WWE are going down this road for, but it might be alright, it might not be alright, so it's just, I don't know, it just depends really, doesn't it? I'm hoping they will make it into a feud, but it really does depend. So yeah, so we move on. Uh, unless you want to say anything? Want to add anything more to no, that? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm good on that one, so oh, cheers. <laughs> that's good. So we come out, Hogan's obviously been advertised tonight that he's going to come out and present Cesaro with the trophy. Uh, and I won't be like, the trophy was fucking massive. Um, yeah, yeah. So Hogan which, comes which out. also didn't make much sense either because he's presenting Cesaro with the trophy, but Cesaro walked out on WrestleMania with the trophy. You know, he carried it out with him, so it's like... Yeah, okay. yeah so I think it was just that it was Hogan's idea and he wanted yeah. to... 
opportunity with him. You had just a little, like, obviously, segment, and which obviously leads to another segment. And then, so Hogan comes out, obviously, uh, people, he knows he botched, obviously, at WrestleMania, he said the Superdome or the Silverdome, or one of those. He botched up, people were letting him know, he remembered what it was. So Cesaro comes out, uh, with Zeb Colt, obviously. Zeb, Zeb goes straight on the mic, and basically goes, no, 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 no. People who speak across our borders, you know, and just don't want to take this, like, he does not want to take this trophy. Uh, Cesaro stops him, and so Cesaro says, Well, you know what, Zeb? I am not a Zeb Coulter guy. And he goes, What? He goes, I am a Paul Heyman guy. And then, fucking hell, out of the blue, Paul Heyman comes out of nowhere. So now, obviously, Paul Heyman is managing Cesaro. I mean, could that, could that really get any better? A talented wrestler has just won a big match. He's now being managed by Paul Heyman. I, I couldn't even find my penis that night. I'd been gone and been ripped off. It'd probably been thrown out for the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it was oh, just like I, I, I feel like I needed a defibrillator on that war or something because I just I just couldn't take how good war was being, you know, I just I just couldn't take it. So obviously, um Swagger comes out, jumps to Zoro, picks up the trophy, throws it out of the ring, he break he doesn't even throw it that hard, he throws it down and it breaks into like thousand little pieces, so So it must have obviously just been a prop, you know, yeah, it's not a real yeah, trophy. It's like a, probably just a shitty prop. But he throws it down, I mean watch it back, he doesn't throw it really hard, he just drops it out and he's like shatters completely. I was thinking, fucking hell. So we go into So what they go into Sorrow versus Swagger. Wasn't it was a pretty good match actually. They actually do really do work together other than being a team. So obviously this obviously ends the Real Americans. A little bit of a disappointment, but I suppose you know it had to end you know earlier. But it was a pretty good match. Uh, some good back and forth stuff. A lot of um, trying to get the page to lock in. He gets out of it. Uh, Swagger Sorrow comes back. Obviously he goes to hit the swing uh, on him. The, the, the Swiss swing or the King of Swing. Uh, but Swagger walks out. Because he doesn't want any of this and gets counted out. Oh, yeah, so, um, as well. yeah, pretty much. Yes, and Seb was obviously still going frantic, like, "No, my da 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 da," and all the other stuff. So, I mean, it was good to see. I don't know. I think having Paul Heyman back in Cesaro is amazing. I'm hoping it doesn't end anytime soon. I'm hoping it goes for like six years. I know that sounds really suck and stupid. I know, <laughs> but like. I don't know if whose idea it was to work with him, but I'm so glad that he's working with him. So, what, what, what about you? Well, you you think you think Paul Heyman back in Cesaro is a good thing? Yeah, well, definitely for Cesaro. I mean, because I'm assuming Brock Lesnar's probably buggered off now, so I mean, Paul Heyman's got nothing to do. So, yeah, <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, Cesaro. I don't know. But, um, some speculation. What would you reckon? I mean, do you think he's going to probably see a title shot uh, sometime this year? Maybe or Cesaro or Lesnar. Uh, Cesaro, obviously, Lesnar's, um, I, I, I think Lesnar might have pulled it off, I don't well, know. No, I mean, he was on Raw, I think, supposedly, he was meant to be facing Batista, like, uh, Oh, yeah, he was on that, that Raw, but, uh, well, he's uh, not been seen since, I don't want to go to it, to it. that'll be the next podcast, but, um, but, uh, yeah. Podcast. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, he went on, yeah, I don't know, he might be done. Star shot for Cesaro, maybe, it could possibly happen, now he's got Paul Heyman back in him, I'm assuming he's just going to maybe, like, crush people for a while maybe and hopefully he'll maybe get more forward after the uh after the whole um shield and uh and, oh, fuck it, it's whole shield and evolution thing come back I might, as well, I might as well just say we can't talk about that yet but yeah uh after that's ended so yeah so we move on to the main event of the night which is Deep Brian versus Triple H and there was only like literally 10 minutes left of Raw so I knew for a fact that this was not going to be a proper match I knew for a fact it wasn't going to be a proper match so Daniel Bryan comes out obviously um but uh, the, Danny Bryan, I think Batista and Orton come down as well. Uh, they obviously basically cripple him. They hit finishes on Daniel Bryan. Batista from RKO. Ken comes out next. He hits Daniel Bryan with a choke slam, and then of course Triple H comes out. So I'm thinking, okay, straight away they're going to ring the bell, obviously, and Triple H is going to be champion. I thought, okay, this is a bit of a weird one. Yeah, this is then, a very weird one. And then all of a sudden, fucking Shield. All of a sudden, Shield. And all of a sudden, yeah, so before the Tibet comes out, tells the ref to ring the bell, before he can pick him up, we hear the shield. And of course the shield come into the rescue. The shield get in the ring, Alton and Kane and uh, Patricia on the other side, face each other just like the Wyatt's was. Tibet just going, no, 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 there will be no bloodshed, there will be no bloodshed. He turns around, Roman Reigns breaks him in half with the fucking spear. Yeah, that was awesome to watch. Should be fucking Awesome to watch. You know, um, yeah, so it's obviously like the face off. Uh, Trish says no, turns around, takes the spear. All hell basically breaks loose, the shield and everything. They're just attacking, doing moves. It ends then, obviously, Triple H alone with the shield in the ring. 
Jabez gets up slowly, realising what the fuck, turns around, boom, there's the funny knee hit from Daniel Bryan, and then basically the whole war in strong with Daniel Bryan and the shield, you know, just going, yes, yes, you know, and like, he's obviously just overcome, like, that thing, but that whole segment itself was fucking great, and there was a meme on Facebook when it says that, oh, you know, that, that moment when you know you fucking love wrestling, <laughs> you know, because of that moment, see, WWE can be good, all these people will say, no, it's the actually do, it's the actually do, no, it's not, I mean, if you took the time to sit down, Smackdown isn't always going to make you go, oh my god, by god, and take your popcorn, and, you know, maybe launch a girlfriend up, the window, yeah, you know, it's not always going to do that, but you know, just like maybe if you give it a chance, you know, give it a chance. I wish people give it more chance. They just, you know, it's either Stone Cold comes back or I don't give a shit anymore. Well, then, mate, yeah. you're missing out. You missed out on the good WrestleMania and the good Raw. Sorry, ran over now, but yeah. So, so ending, it ended strong. The whole Raw was fucking amazing. It ended really strong. So, I mean, would you think good ending, good strong ending? Well, oh, definitely, good? definitely. I mean, like I said, I would have liked to see a bit of a match, but then, if, then again, I realised that Daniel Bryan already wrestled two matches the previous night, so, I mean, yeah, obviously can't was, make, a, make know, him do another 30-minute fucking Raw yeah, match, exactly. you know, so it's... Just, it's never yeah. going to be a proper match, was it? Uh, uh, but it was especially good. with the way we've ended with the Shield and whatnot, um, as we'll go on to ne- uh, the next time, it's uh, setting something up really big. Um, yeah. it's something, I, something I didn't see coming, myself. Sets up, fuck it. I mean, it sets up. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah. Yeah, it sets up really good. Um, and I think we're probably even going to get a match at Stream Wars maybe between those three teams and stuff. So that's going to be good. So yeah, unless you've got anything more to say, we're coming to the end of this podcast. We've just reviewed three things, and overall, that was a really good week for WWE. Oh yeah, definitely. I know. I was on edge. I, I was on edge. You know, I lost my penis pretty much through Raw and the WrestleMania. Hang on, hang on. You were on uh, edge. Hang on, hang on. What? Go you on. were you were on edge. I mean, I was on edge. Yeah. <laughs> did he know about this? I mean, was he cool with it and shit? I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, we had those one nights. Uh, just make smell like chloroform, and you know, we just fell for it. You know. <laughs> Uh, hey, Harris, yeah, you know, this is the comedian of it. This is the comedian of it. You know, yeah, go over to his, go over to his YouTube. Give him some, give him some love. You know, give Pete some love. Of course, go to Raven. Yeah, so give him some love too, because I mean, he's obviously the, the bigger expert here. I mean, me, I'm just the, I'm the color commentator, as it were. <laughs> oh, come on, man. We're, we're both fans. You took, a, you took a leap, but you're back in it, man. You know, the whole, the idea is we've, you know, you know, and I hope you've all have enjoyed listening to me and this fucker like talk about it you know and feel free if you know if you did enjoy it want to see more like the video if you want to comment on anything we've said down below fuck it just to say it i mean we're probably not gonna if we get a lot we're probably not gonna get a lot of comments anyway but if we do we'll probably try to read them all you know and shit like that but yeah pete jack has got another channel or she does pete the metalhead check that shit out as well we're gonna now this is our we do the same as plugging <laughs> you know so but yeah, it has yeah. been a good week so we and uh, next time we'll get next one up where we talk about what happened on Smackdown and get your pay-per-view when it's in we've got Extreme Wars coming up that's obviously going to be a good pay-per-view it normally is considering it's a PG era pay-per-view so yeah I mean Extreme yeah. Wars in PG yeah but no I mean they've had a few good Extreme Wars pay-per-views actually considering it's PG I'm not going to lie I mean I don't know if and I'm not going to lie either. It's not called Extreme Rules. It's called Backlash. Why can't it still be called Backlash? Yeah, I, I liked Backlash. Wasn't was it? Wasn't Backlash in January though? I'm sure it wasn't. No, no, no. no. Rumble was in January. No, Backlash was always the one after WrestleMania. It's the one after WrestleMania. Yeah, it was. And they went Judgment Day and then King of the Ring and then Fully Loaded and then, Oh, King of the Ring. Oh, uh, I don't know I why. They cut so many awesome pay per views. And then what they had the idea of, why not? Let's throw matches like Hell in a Cell and TLC into actual pay per views because that's a good idea. Yeah, well done, WWE. See, we yeah, love yeah. it. Enough, yeah, enough about our bits and stuff like old school era. Let's, um, <laughs> let's yeah. wrap this up and whatnot with. Um, yeah, so. Well, yeah, I should say uh, thank you for having me on and whatnot, and I'll never see you again. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, hey, right. just, yeah, this is my first good, podcast, uh, and I was glad, I'm glad you uh, had me take part and whatnot. And I'm looking forward to doing uh, more yes. with you. And yeah, we shall uh, exactly. carry on. So that's for uh, me, uh, Peter Metalhead, aka Jack Donnelly, and of course, uh, Raven. Hey, Raven, uh, as in Alfred D. Fan Raven, my YouTube channel. Uh, um, before we go, before we actually sign off, my mate, I do have a mate called John. He might be ventured in some of these podcasts a little bit later on, so you might be able to hear from all three of us. I hope we didn't bore you. I hope you enjoyed it. We will literally see you next time. And literally, follow the buzzers, believe in the shield, and 
get a drink up to the fucking armor war if you haven't done one already. So, yeah. See you later. What? 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 What?